Hey, how's it going? Ben here. Great to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. So in this video, we're going to be talking about driving in Thailand. Now on this channel, we talk about living in Thailand quite a bit. And I thought we could spend some time talking about using the roads, getting about and driving in Thailand. So this is going to be kind of an overview. And um, this is going to be, well, this video is titled driving in Thailand, what you need to know. So we're going to give an overview of like speed limits, uh, what not to do and some points of note that you may want to consider if you're about to start driving in Thailand. I'm making this video because different countries have like unique sort of things that happen on the road uh, and definitely there's a big difference in between using the roads in Asia than perhaps there is in Europe or America. So if you're like me and you're moving from Europe or America or somewhere like that, and you're coming to Asia, then there will be things that are very different about using the roads out here. Also, we'll look at some of the documentation that are required for foreigners driving in Thailand. Without further ado, let's get into it and have a look at driving in Thailand. All right, so driving in Thailand, what you need to know. And we're going to start off with the basics. So this will be a few quick rapid fire things um, that you should know if you're going to come out here and start using the roads. Uh, Thailand drives on the left. So yeah, that's probably one of the most useful things, but also one of the most obvious things you'll probably notice immediately that Thailand drives on the left. If you're wondering why Thailand drives on the left when most of the world drives on the right, um, well, actually, I had a little bit of a Google search because um, I was wondering why being someone who's from the UK Obviously, we drive on the left there, so I wondered why um, Thailand dro drove on the left as well. So apparently, the first car in Thailand was a gift from the British royal family to the Thai royal family. That car obviously came from England or the UK. I'm not sure where it came from uh, specifically. But because it came from the UK, it was set up to drive on the left. And supposedly, that is the reason why Thailand still to this day drives on the left of the road. So yeah, worthwhile to remember, um, in Thailand, you drive on the left. Maybe a bit confusing, especially if you're coming from a country that drives on the right. You must be 18 years old to drive in Thailand. So if you're um, 16 or 17, worthwhile remembering, it's not technically legal for you to be out using the roads. Um, I've read online that you must be 18 um, to be in charge of a vehicle here in Thailand. Tourists must have an international driving permit or IDP. Um, so the easiest way if you're coming from abroad to be um, legal to drive in Thailand, obviously you probably don't have a Thai driving license if you're just coming as a tourist. So what you can do is apply for an international driving permit. And I do believe they are recognized here in Thailand. So if you had your um, British driving license, let's say, or wherever you're from, your home country's driving license, um, and the international driving permit, then you should be fine to travel on the road. Um, another note I read online, said that you may need your passport as well in when you're showing your documents. So if you got pulled over by the police, say you're renting a car, let's say you're on holiday in Phuket, you're renting a car, driving around, and you get stopped by the police, which does happen a lot, especially in the sort of bigger tourist areas. You may get pulled over and they want to see you, you're legal to drive. And um, so what you would probably want to have with you is your driving license from your home country, uh, the international driving permit, and your passport, and you should be fine. That's what I read online. And actually, I do have some experience with this. I, when I was pulled over in Pai, so just north of Chiang Mai once, when I was riding a motorcycle, I was asked for an international driving permit or a Thai license. Fortunately, I have a Thai driving license, so I didn't need the, the international driving permit. However, because um, it looked like I was a tourist, um, then they asked for the international driving permit, which I didn't have. So I do think that if you have your international driving permit, your license from your home country and uh, your passport, supposedly, then that would be fine for you to drive then in the Kingdom of Thailand. So the international driving permit is sort of a new thing for me. It's not something I know specifically about. From a Google search online, um, this is what it kind of looks like. So this one is from the USA. It says fee is $15 and it's look like a little um, sort of white booklet. Apparently you can then take that abroad. So yeah, that's um, potentially what the international driving permit looks like. Uh, once again, not anything I have experience using. Like I said, I do have a Thai car and motorcycle license, so I don't have any need for the international driving permit. Uh, and that is that brings us on to our next point quite neatly. Uh, expats can get a Thai driving license. So if you are living in Thailand for an extended period of time, I'd say it's definitely worth getting a Thai driving license, especially if you already have a driving license um, from your home country, then it's not 
too difficult to get the Thai driving license. Now, maybe it's fine just having the international driving permit and your um, license from your home country. However, I do think having a Thai driving license does make things a bit more smooth. Um, you can also use it for identification. You don't then need to carry your passport everywhere you go uh, when you're in Thailand. If you've got your driving license or your Thai driving license, it's a good form of uh, identification if you're living in the kingdom. And it's much simpler if you get stopped by the police they want to see your license and you've got a Thai driving license, then you probably won't get any issues whatsoever. So definitely worth applying for your Thai driving license if you're staying here for an extended um, period of time. And just to show you what that looks like, so here's a picture of a Thai driving license I found online. Presumably this is for promotional purposes only. And yeah, that's what a Thai license would look like. And you can get one if you're a foreign citizen and living in the kingdom of Thailand. Getting a Thai driving license isn't as um, intimidating as it may seem. It's actually pretty straightforward. I am planning to make a video on this specifically in the future, so stay tuned if that's something you're interested in doing. I will make a video soon about the process of getting your Thai driving license. I will say this though, if you already have um, a driving license from your home country, you may be able to get the Thai driving license without having to redo your test. So, I already had a car license from the UK. Now this might not be true for all countries. It may also not be true anymore. I don't know if the rules have changed. This was a few years back. But when I went for my driving license, for my car at least, I didn't have to do the practical test because I'd already passed a practical test in the UK. I did have to pass the theory test. I also had to watch um, some video material on driving in Thailand. Uh, but then they give me the Thai car license. Now I did need a motorcycle license also and I didn't have a motorcycle license from the UK so I did end up having to do the uh, motorcycle practical test. Once again for the motorcycle license I had to do a theory test and the practical test um, and I also had to watch some uh, videos about um, road safety and that kind of thing. The paperwork could be a little bit confusing but was manageable. The theory test had English so you could um, answer the questions in English, you didn't need to learn to read and write Thai to do the theory test. So yeah, getting a Thai driving license is definitely realistic if you're living out here for an um, extended period of time, and I would say worth your time also. All right, so that is the basics. Let's look at um, the typical speed limits. So obviously pretty important to know, and there are kind of a standard set of speed limits for the Kingdom of Thailand. So if you're in an urban area on urban roads, the um, typical speed limit is 60 kilometers per hour. So that's in the cities or in towns. Typically the max speed you can go is 60 kilometers per hour, uh, unless you're instructed otherwise. Um, so that would be that. When it comes to rural roads, when you're outside of the city, um, then the typical speed limit is up to 90 kilometers per hour. So yeah, when you're out of the city, you're in the country, but still on the smaller roads, then the speed limit does increase to around 90 kilometers per hour. And finally for highways, so the big highways, the max speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour. And that's on the big highways driving around in Thailand. So those are your typical speed limits. Obviously you want to be on the lookout for any signs uh, saying that the speed limit is different to this, but just to give you a rough idea, this is the kind of speed limit, or the kind of limitations on speed when driving in the Kingdom of Thailand. Alrighty. So let's talk a little bit about some um, illegal or restricted actions. Um, so this is pretty standard for most countries, but I thought it would be worth throwing them into this sort of overview of driving in Thailand. Um, you can't drink and drive, that's illegal. Um, so yeah, don't be doing that. Probably not a good idea anyway. But yeah, drinking and driving is obviously illegal in most countries, and that is true also for Thailand. Um, talking and driving, also illegal, so you're not supposed to be talking on your mobile phone unless you um, have the hands reset. set. Now, this is something you may see, uh, but yeah, it is technically illegal, and I wouldn't recommend doing it. It could get you in trouble, could get fines, and you, you don't want that, do you? So yeah, don't do these, don't do that. It is also illegal to not wear a seat belt. Now, some vehicles out here are pretty old. Some may not have seat belts in the back. Um, but yeah, it is actually illegal to not have your seat belt on as well. So bear that in mind when um, maybe you're choosing a car, if you notice the back seats don't have seat belts or anything like that, or someone tries to encourage you to get in the back of a truck or something like that, then it is technically illegal to be 
uh, driving in the Kingdom of Thailand without a seatbelt. So those are the illegal restrictions that you probably would be expecting. They're pretty common, pretty standard uh, internationally. So and things are no different here in the Kingdom of Thailand when you're out on the roads. So just a few things also that I thought would be worth mentioning. So these are a few things that you can take note of because they may be different from your home country. There are a few things that surprised me, at least while driving in Thailand. So I thought I would share them with you. Um, so first up, left turns at red lights. It is legal to make a left turn at a red light in Thailand unless instructed otherwise. So if you're at a red light, and you want to turn left because obviously they drive on the left and um, you are allowed to take a left turn even when the light is on red unless there is a sign saying you're not allowed to. Now the tricky thing is if there is a sign that says um, you're not allowed to turn left it will be written in Thai so that is a problem for um, non-Thai speakers because maybe you can't read the sign. And what I would suggest, what I do typically, if there is a left turn, if it looks a little bit dodgy, if it's like a little bit set back and you have to travel quite far, or if it's just a super busy junction, then I avoid turning left uh, when it's red. Uh, also, if I see a sign at the left turn that kind of looks like it's indicating left with some Thai writing underneath it, then I would probably assume that it is uh, set warning that you are not allowed to take a left turn. So that is what I kind of practice and sort of really just take note of what everyone else is doing and try and figure things out from there. But that may be a surprise to you. I know in America, I think it's legal to take a right on a red light. And so, yeah, it's kind of similar to America. However, obviously we're driving the left, so we're reversing that. Um, yeah, just a little note to remember, obviously in the UK where I come from, this is not legal. You can't go anywhere when there's a red light, but in Thailand, you can turn left on a red light when it's safe to do so. And as long as you're not instructed by road signs or anyone else uh, not to do so. Flashing headlights. Flashing headlights indicate the driver has no intention of stopping and is indicating their presence on the road. Now, this is in direct contradiction to what flashing headlights mean in the UK or what people use them to indicate in the UK. In the UK, if you're um, sort of stuck at a junction, you're trying to pull out, and then and someone slows down and flashes their light, they're telling you, yeah, it's all right to go. Um, but that's the opposite of what is the <laughs> flashing headlights are used for in Thailand. Rather than using the horn uh, to indicate presence out here, typically if, you're drive, if someone's driving down um, a freeway and someone's coming at a crossroad and wanting to pull out, uh, the driver on the uh, main road will flash their lights um, to sort of signal and get, get sort of the... Um, attention of the driver pulling out that they're there in the road, they're not slowing down, they want you to know they're there. So obviously that contradiction, if you're coming from a country where flashing headlights means something else, that's something to definitely take note of, that the flashing lights means that they're probably not gonna slow down, uh, they have no intention of stopping, they want you to see them, and they want you to be aware that they're traveling in that direction. So yeah, maybe don't pull out. If you see someone flashing their headlights, definitely don't. Okay, and finally, honking, Horn. So honking is typically used to signal presence to other drivers. However, Thai drivers will often honk the horn, passing temples and Buddhist statues as a mark of respect. So I've included this one. Obviously, honking the horn can be indicating their presence or their uh, annoyance at a sort of movement. Like most countries, it's like a hazardous warning um, sound to use, uh, indicator to use. However, um, also what is quite specific to Thailand and has confused me a couple of times on the road is maybe you're driving somewhere and you keep hearing a honk, honk, honk at a certain point in the road. It could be that there's some kind of temple or statue or small shrine. I think that's a better word. It's not really at the temples, it's at the shrines uh, to certain parts of the city and that are typically Buddhist. Then um, drivers will like honk. It's not a, an aggressive honk, it's a light honk. But they're um, honking at the shrine. So Sometimes I've been driving around the road and thinking people have been honking at me or there's a, uh, something dangerous in the road when actually there's a shrine over here that people are paying their respects to by honking the horn. So yeah, just something unique to Thailand that maybe you should be aware of if you're driving out on the road. Maybe you'll get a little bit confused at why people keep honking their horn at this specific spot, especially if you live somewhere and you know you, every time you drive on that road, you notice people honking the horn and you may, may cause some kind of confusion. But if there is sort of a shrine there or something like that, then maybe people are paying their respects by honking their heart. Thought it'd be worth uh, throwing in there. I'm going to end this video by talking about some other things that are a little bit specifically dangerous or hazardous to, um, especially to foreigners who are driving in Thailand because they may not be used to them. 
So just a couple of hazardous things to go over and things to really take note of and be careful about whilst using the roads here in Thailand that I've noticed. Okay, so um, first up is watch out for stray dogs. Now, this may come as a bit of a surprise to you. So there are quite a lot of stray dogs. There's a, a lot of um, dogs who kind of live semi-wild in a way. They sort of just populate certain streets, and maybe a few people sort of feed it or whatever. But yeah, there are a lot of dogs in the towns and cities, in some towns and cities that sort of don't live at a home. Now this is quite different if you're coming from a place like the UK where if there was a stray dog, people would be alarmed by that and phone like the dog compound and he'd come and pick it up. But there are a lot of dogs who sort of live outside. But even if they have a family, if they have a home that they stay in, so oftentimes they're allowed to sort of roam freely about. So this can be a problem while you're driving your car. And it may seem like obvious to watch out for dogs, but I can't stress this enough, you need to really slow down when you see sort of a stray dog or a dog on the street in Thailand. Dogs don't understand traffic. Um, and I actually know a few people who, it's not like uncommon to hit a dog. Like I know someone who's fallen off a motorcycle because a dog ran out in front of them. Uh, I know someone who's had a dog like jump, step out in front of a car and made quite a lot of damage to the front end of the car. Um, so yeah, it is a real common problem. Obviously dogs don't understand traffic, they don't understand the roads. Uh, they seem to be um, <laughs> lackadaisical around the roads. Dogs and chickens actually I find, um, two animals that really just don't understand traffic. Like if you get some birds, uh, they'll fly away straight away when they see a car coming towards them. Chickens and dogs don't seem to have that kind of awareness. They sort of just stumble up in front of your bike or whatever. I've had like a dog come out in front of me on a highway when I was driving on the side on my motorcycle and I had to completely stop. Uh, I had to come down from, I was probably doing about 70 kilometers per hour, I had to come down to zero, stop, it didn't move at all. And he just sort of walked up to me and started sniffing my foot once I was stopped. So dogs really don't understand traffic, probably sounds <laughs> quite intuitive. However, it is um, something that I have noticed. Like I said, I do know a few people who have been in road incidents caused um, or involving a dog. So definitely watch out for the side dogs, the street dogs here in Thailand when you're out on the roads and really slow down, really slow down when you see a dog because they may just jump out or run out into the road. Uh, you may not be expecting that. You may be expecting them to retreat, but maybe they won't. So watch out for the um, stray dogs or any dog on the um, streets in Thailand. Uh, watch out also for two-way and one-way road changes. And one of the most confusing things about um, using the road systems um, and, and actually this is something that happens to me a lot where I now live in the city. At different times, the roads will change from two-way to one-way. This seems to happen at big sort of public places. So out, um, actually it happens at the school I work with. The road in front of the school uh, that I work at has a like two lanes and usually this is a two-way road. However, in the mornings and in the evenings or in the af late afternoon when the parents come in to collect their kids and when their parents come in to drop off their kids, this road is changed to a one-way road. And um, this is a, like, uh, it makes the traffic, because there's a, obviously a lot of traffic at those times, specifically at the school, so this makes the traffic flow better, supposedly. But it also does happen on a few other roads uh, in the city center. They seem to change for rush hours. Um, and they go from being two-way to one-ways. It's a little bit um, difficult to read, especially if you're a foreigner, maybe you don't get the information, maybe you can't read the road signs. So yeah, definitely be wary of this. Um, this is fairly common, I've seen it quite a bit, especially where I live now, it seems to happen more than where I used to live, so I've included it in this video. Some roads may change from two-way to one-way, so watch out for that also. And finally, take care when driving at night. Um, so yeah, not all streets have road lights, not all vehicles are gonna have their lights turned on. There's a lot of motorcycles, uh, they're hard to see at night. There's a lot of conditions in Thailand, like the rain when you get caught in a downpour. Um, and yeah, just a few, uh, sort of a few things that can really compound and make driving at nighttime that bit more tricky out here that I find. So this is what a point I want to end on. So yeah, really take care at night. Like I said, visibility can sometimes be an issue, especially when you're outside of the towns or cities, the roads may not be lit at all. Maybe they'll only have your headlights. Watch out, there are quite a lot of vehicles who won't have their lights turned on. There are a lot older vehicles out here as well. So the lights may be broken um, and they're not switched on. There's a million motorbikes. Um, so they're a little bit harder to see, especially if their lights are dim or wearing out. 
Um, so yeah, just really take care at night. This is something I find very difficult if driving at nighttime out here. It seems a little bit more hazardous um, than perhaps it did in the UK. So I thought I'd leave that as an end point and conclude this video. All right, so that was a little brief overview of driving in the kingdom of Thailand. I want to talk about a few things that I noticed and just give you like an overview of the experience I've had driving in the kingdom of Thailand and some of the points of note I would like to highlight for you if you're gonna come out here or you are already out here and you're considering renting or buying a vehicle. Uh, I will go into this topic in more detail in the next sort of coming videos. I have plans to make videos about getting your Thai driving license, uh, the car and motorcycle, uh, and a few other things. So we'll go into it a little, few of these points we've picked up on in this video. We'll go into them in a little bit more detail uh, in the future. So I plan to do that in these coming weeks. So stay tuned for those if this is a topic that interests you. If you enjoyed this video or if you found it useful, then please consider hitting that like button. I greatly appreciate it. And if you're someone who lives in Thailand or you're planning to move out um, and live in Thailand long term, then definitely consider subscribing to this channel because this is a topic I do discuss quite a lot and I plan to continue to do so in the future. If you have any questions about driving in Thailand, let me know in the comment section. I'll um, answer them if I can. And as always, I greatly appreciate you watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.